welcome my dear confirmants to this online virtual class in the last session the first three commandments of the decalogue helped us reflect on loving god and we said that one of the reasons we need to love and respect god is the fact that he has created us and loved us first jesus who came not to abolish but to fulfill the law guides us to understand the depth of these first three commandments loving with a heart mind and soul according to jesus is firstly reserved to god the first three commandments basically tell us that god should always take the first place in our life we could show our belief and our love in the father the son and the holy spirit by putting god first in all that we do begin our day by thanking god for the gift of life and end our day by thanking god for keeping us and our loved ones safe just as we would never utter a abusive insulting word to someone we love and respect the second commandment calls us to be aware to treat the name of god respectfully on sunday we begin our week by thanking god in the celebration of the eucharist it reminds us of god's victory over the forces of evil on easter sunday we will now see a true story of jyoti ben and after that we will have some questions for discussion jyoti ben was married to kalsi in a beautiful village ceremony when she was turning just 18 kalsi was a farm laborer about 6 years older than her they were fond of each other and both loved their two daughters very much when the older daughter reached puberty there was the usual village celebration for such events but after that day jyoti ben realized that kalsi was getting physically attracted to his own daughter and praising her for her charms then one night jyoti ben's worst fears became a reality Kalsi unable to control his drunken stupor molested his own daughter who did not know how to resist him Jyoti Ben was shocked she first thought that this was a passing problem in the morning when Kalsi was sober she questioned him about what he had done the previous night he gave an evasive reply and told her that all would be all right but she was disappointed when a month later kalsi repeated his misdeed jyoti ben tried to intervene but kalsi beat her up in the presence of their daughter being illiterate jyoti ben did not know how to handle the situation not wanting anybody else to know she could not ask for advice from anyone while she was getting more and more angry on the other hand her husband was taking greater and greater advantage of his daughter jyoti ben was frustrated with her own inability to do anything to save her daughter as the years went by she was totally unprepared for the bigger problem that she was going to face within 5 years their younger daughter also came of age and they had the usual celebration and within less than a month her husband molested the second daughter as well that night however the mother and the daughters put up a fight but to no avail jyoti ben was extremely desperate the next evening as kalsi sat for dinner jyoti ben served him poisoned food within less than an hour kalsi was no more when the villagers gathered to find out what was going on jyoti ben was unable to tell them the truth 
However, when the post-mortem report came in, she had to tell the police the entire story. She wondered whether she would have to face a term in jail for what she had done. Questions for discussion Why do you think the father was unable to control his passion and carried on raping his daughters? What do you think about the action taken by the mother to protect her daughters? If you were a family member, what would you have done? I'm sure you all have your own views and responses to the questions. Let us see what church teaches us about such situations. Our today's topic is respecting life at home and in society. Let us see how the problems like the ones we have just discussed can be sorted out when we explore the significance of the fourth, fifth and the sixth commandments of the Decalogue in the light of the teaching of Jesus in the New Testament. Fourth commandment, honor your father and mother. Just as God is the father of all, this divine fatherhood is the source of human parenting. And the model of family bonds should be the bond of unity between the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Children should obey their parents in all that they ask of them when it is for their good or that of the family. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. They should obey their teachers and all to whom their parents have entrusted them. But if the child is convinced in the conscience that it would be morally wrong to obey a particular order, he or she must not do it. As they grow up, children should continue to respect their parents. They should anticipate their wishes, willingly seek their advice and accept their just warnings. Obedience towards parents ceases when children reach the age of independence, not so respect, which is always owed to them. This respect has its roots in the fear of God, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Honor to whom honor is due. We don't like to hear these words. This is for your own good. But parents are the ones who are supposed to know better than we do what is truly good for us. Honoring parents is a form of honoring all authority, including God himself. The fourth commandment does not limit itself only to family relationships. It also throws light on other relationships in society. Brothers and sisters, siblings, children of our parents, cousins, descendants of our ancestors, fellow citizens, the children of our country. In the baptized, the children of our mother church. Every human person, son and daughter of the one God, who we call 
our father. In this way, our relationship with our neighbors are recognized as personal in character. The neighbor is not a unit in the human collective. He is someone who by his own origins deserves particular attention and respect. Fifth commandment, you shall not kill. God alone is the master of life. Human life is sacred because from its beginning it involves the creative action of God and it remains forever in a special relationship with the Creator who is its sole end. God alone is the Lord of life from its beginning until its end. No one can under any circumstance claim for himself the right directly to destroy an innocent human being. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus takes this simple principle to a highly refined level when he teaches in Matthew 5, 21 to 24, to be very careful even about the anger that provides the impulse to kill. We will reflect on certain specific issues that are related to the fifth commandment. Abortion. Human life must be respected and protected from the moment of conception. From the first moment of its existence, a human being must be recognized as having the rights of a person, among which is the inviolable right of every innocent being to life. Euthanasia, also known as mercy killing. Whatever its motives and means, direct euthanasia consists in putting an end to the lives of handicapped, sick or dying persons. It is morally unacceptable. Suicide. Suicide contradicts the natural inclination of the human being to preserve and perpetuate his or her life. Contrary to the just love of self. Breaks the tie of solidarity with family, nation and other human societies and obligations. Suicide is contrary to love for the living God. Sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery. God created humans in his image and likeness, but he also created them male and female. And so both men and women have been created with the same and equal dignity. The union of man and woman in marriage needs to maintain that dignity that God has given to both in equal measure. Adultery is a breach of this dignity that God has given to men and women. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, 27 to 30, that not only physical adultery destroys human dignity, but also adultery of heart. Adultery of heart can be simply understood as being unfaithful. Lust. Lust is disordered desire for or inordinate enjoyment of sexual pleasure. Sexual pleasure is morally disordered when sought for itself, isolated from its procreative and unitive purposes. Masturbation 
Masturbation is to be understood as the deliberate stimulation of the genital organs in order to derive sexual pleasure. Masturbation is an offense against love because it makes the excitement of sexual pleasure an end in itself and uncouples it from the holistic unfolding of love between a man and a woman. That is why sex with yourself is a contradiction in terms. Fornication Fornication is carnal union between an unmarried man and an unmarried woman. It is gravely contrary to the dignity of persons and of human sexuality which is naturally ordered to the good of spouses and the generation and education of children. If you are not married and having sex, it's not dating, it's called fornication. Pornography Pornography consists in removing real or stimulated sexual acts from the intimacy of the partners in order to display them deliberately to third parties. It offends against chastity because it perverts the conjugal act, the intimate giving of spouses to each other. Anyone who produces, buys or consumes pornographic materials violates human dignity and seduces others to sin. Prostitution Prostitution does injury to the dignity of the person who engages in it, reducing the person to an instrument of sexual pleasure. The one who pays sins gravely against himself. He violates the chastity to which his baptism pledged him and defiles his body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. In prostitution, love becomes a commodity and the person is degraded to an object of pleasure. Rape, incest. Rape is the forcible violation of the sexual intimacy of another person. It does injury to justice and charity. Rape deeply wounds the respect, freedom and physical and moral integrity to which every person has a right. Graver still is the rape of children committed by parents, incest, or those responsible for the education of the children entrusted to them. Someone who rapes another person thoroughly and completely humiliates that person. Homosexual Acts Homosexuality refers to relations between men or between women who experience an exclusive or predominant sexual attraction towards persons of the same sex. Basing itself on sacred scripture which presents homosexual acts as acts of grave immorality Tradition has always declared that homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. They are contrary to the natural law. They close the sexual act to the gift of life. Under no circumstances can they be approved. In today's session, we have learned the fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. The fifth commandment, you shall not kill by abortion, euthanasia 
and suicide. The sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery through lust, masturbation, fornication, pornography, prostitution, rape, homosexuality. Keep everything aside. Become aware of God's presence here in our midst. As we sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sit straight. Keep your feet on the ground. Open your palms and keep them on your lap. Close your eyes. Calm yourselves. Become aware of your breathing. As you breathe in, say in your mind, Jesus, I love you. As you breathe out, say, Jesus, forgive me. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Gently open your eyes as we listen to God's word. A reading from the second book of Samuel. At the turn of the year, when kings go out on campaign, David sent out Joab along with his officers and the army of Israel, and they ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. David, however, remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David rose from his siesta and strolled about on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing, who was very beautiful. David had inquiries made about the woman and was told she is Bethsaba, daughter of Eliam and wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Then David sent messengers and took her. When she came to him, he had relations with her at a time when she was just purified after her monthly period. She then returned to her house, but the woman had conceived and sent the information to David. I am with child. The next morning, David wrote a letter to Joab, which he sent by Uriah. In it, he directed, place Uriah up front where the fighting is fierce, then pull back and leave him to be struck down dead. So while Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew the defenders were strong. When the men of the city made a sortie against Joab, some officers of David's army fell and among them Uriah the Hittite died. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband had died, she mourned her lord. But once the mourning was over, David sent for her and brought her into his house. She became his wife and bore him a son. But the Lord was displeased with what David had done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gently close your eyes and reflect on the words we have just heard. Gently open your eyes. According to you, which of David's sin you think is the more serious and why? The adultery he committed with Bathsheba or the murder of Uriah? I am sure that after learning today's lesson, respecting life at home and in society, and going through the fourth, fifth 
and the sixth commandment, we understand that adultery and murder are both grave and serious sins. Now let us see the message that God sent David through the prophet Nathan. My Lord, I would ask that you hear this matter in private. Very well, we leave us to it. Now, Nathan, tell me about this case. There are two men in a nearby city. One rich, the other poor. The rich man has many sheep, many cattle. The poor one has nothing except for one little ewe lamb is raised up since birth, like it was one of his own children. And yet, the rich man has taken up the poor man's one little ewe lamb to slaughter and sell as his own. Does anyone answer to this? The rich man must give the poor man one whole flock, and then he must die. What was the name of this rich man? I want to know so I can see to his punishment personally. You are that man. God has given you everything. Houses, wives, soldiers, and a great name among the nations. If you needed more from him, you had only to ask. Instead, you used the Ammonite sword to kill Uriah and took his wife. Now the sword will never depart from your house. And God has said, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house. die. You shall not die, but the child born between you and the wife of Uriah shall surely die. sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions. <laughs> Create in me a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence. not take your Holy Spirit from me. Let us gently close our eyes. Do you honor, respect and obey your parents or is it a challenge in your life? Do you respect human life or take it for granted?
do you love and respect yourself david though he was a great king he too fell into the trap of adultery but he had the humility to ask god for pardon and surrendered to the lord's just anger do you still admire him and what do you learn from this Is there any area in your life in connection with the commandments we reflected on that you would want to change Are you ready to surrender your life to Jesus Let us pray to God asking him to give us the grace to overcome the challenges in our life and to walk in his ways. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, help me to live a life, help me to live a life pleasing to you, pleasing to you. Help me to do, help me to do what is right, what is right and to be strong enough, and to be strong enough to say no, to say no to those things, to those things that are against your will, that are against your will. Let me be an example Let me be an example of your love and kindness of your love and kindness to my family to my family friends friends and all I meet and all I meet help me to respect myself help me to respect myself by avoiding places and people by avoiding places and people that would do injury to me that would do injury to me especially give me the courage especially give me the courage and strength and strength to live modestly to live modestly honoring the gift of sexuality honoring the gift of sexuality and avoiding sexual intercourse and avoiding sexual intercourse and other intimate sexual activity and other intimate sexual activity outside marriage outside marriage help me to respect help me to respect life at home life at home and in society and in society amen amen let us together sing the hymn love it was that made us to love him but only when we love everyone can we partake of God's love but only when we love everyone can we 
partake of God's love. Love is a wonderful thing. Joy in our hearts it will bring. Where there's true love, there is God. And where there is God, there is love. Love it was that made us. And it was love that saved us. Love was God's plan when He made us. God's divine nature is love. Born of God's love, we must love. Let us sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Priya was a bright student who did quite well in school and after joining college continued to be diligent in her studies. Being the only child of her parents who worked in the Gulf, Priya stayed in Mumbai with her grandmother. Priya had a good relationship with her grandmother and looked after her very well, but never considered it important to tell her what was going on in her life. College life compared to school was one big roller coaster ride, and she enjoyed every bit of it. One day, Priya did not come back home in the evening till quite late. And so the grandmother was worried. When she did come, finally, the grandmother found her very disturbed. And as soon as she entered the house, Priya was attending to a series of phone calls on her mobile. And she seemed to be having a quarrel with whoever was at the other end of the line. The pressure got just too much for Priya who finally collapsed crying on her grandmother's lap. She complained that she was being followed. It turned out that Priya had got herself into a circle of college going friends, boys and girls who lived there in the vicinity. Initially their friendship had begun by just hanging around after they returned from college, talking and having fun. But very soon, they ended up going together to cyber cafes and other joints. Before long, they found themselves tempted to spend time in some of their friends' homes that were empty, since the parents used to be away at work. It wasn't long before they began to be sexually involved with each other. The grandmother was shocked to hear all this. She knew she would have to tread carefully to get Priya out of this mess. Priya's mother came down from the Gulf and attempted to explain to her the integrate web into which she had got herself. Fortunately for them, in the local SSC, there was a group of older youth who used to meet regularly and somehow seemed to be aware of what was going on. When Priya's mother asked them for help, they all got together, discovered that there were other boys and girls who wanted to save themselves and helped each one of them very discreetly to break away from their evil ways. Question for reflection. Write down the various ways of tackling such situations and share your answers with your animators. 
Respect and obedience are two virtues we need to inculcate towards our parents, keeping in mind the fact that obedience has its limits when it comes to something that is morally wrong. Today's lesson also orients our understanding that we cannot say we love God if we do not love and respect the other human beings he has created. The fifth and the sixth commandments teach us that as children of God, we are called to live in a particular way and treat others too with respect and love for the value of life. Loving God and loving human beings are therefore two sides of the same coin as Jesus too has taught us. While we love and respect humans because we are creations of God, Pope Francis calls us to love, care and respect nature which is also created by the same God. God bless you. Stay home. Stay safe.